given over to the National Heritage Board, who, who need more and more experts to deal with this material. And um, also the great thing lacking in uh, uh, talking about uh, fines in lectures uh, is that the fines are often uh, inaccess inaccessible. Um, you may have a different experience, but in uh, uh, all the lectures that I've taken, very, at very few of them we actually uh, get to uh, get to touch the finds or uh, can uh, can look at them really closely. So, uh, well, the first hand experience is of course the best way to get to know finds, and uh, uh, but it's lacking. And uh, luckily, if you students are able to attend some exciting excavations, they can uh, they can have this first hand experience. Uh, so, uh, moving on to the concept of the project. Uh, yeah, like, like I said, uh, it is to make learning and identifying, identifying archaeological finds more attractive and varied. So, our key words would be accessibility, uh, user friendliness, and uh, easy expandable. So, um, the project is financed by a uh, student initiative measure at the University of Tokyo, and we're developing it. Uh, in cooperation with the Archivision RD research and uh, development. Um, yeah, uh, one of the, uh, I think the most important keyword here is user friendliness because uh, there have been previous uh, applications like that, but oftentimes they are not meant uh, um, uh, for, for general public or they're, they're meant for researchers and um, they are quite, quite tedious to work with and uh, visually not, uh, not too uh, attractive. Uh, and yeah, accessibility, I think that uh, this uh, picture of this archive down there, this is, this is not the way to uh, learn about the fights. So, uh, we had a couple, a couple of challenges that, uh, first of all, that I was really surprised that uh, or can I need to think that uh, I may have some some bulk of data somewhere that I can take and uh, just feed it into uh, code, and we'll have a, uh, we'll have it, uh, basically half the work done already. So yeah, putting together this uh, data, which would be su suitable, has uh, proven a bit of a challenge, and uh, also another challenge that I also kind of wasn't expecting is the the proper names for different fine material because there is, uh, especially for uh, some details or some elements, um, to how to name it because different researchers, different practitioners uh, still have uh, uh, different opinions on this. Um, so uh, I I also tried to find something similar that has been done in this uh, this way earlier. Uh, Maybe afterwards you, you have some suggestions, but uh, previous such uh, project where, where you had some quizzes or some overview views that have been focused on archaeological sites, maybe, maybe not too, too much on the fine material. So, uh, still there have been a couple of uh, uh, projects like that. Uh, one of the fir first uh, was in 1999 that some archaeologists uh, uh, kind of did something similar, but uh, they based their information on a high school textbook. And uh, as you can see from the from the right, this uh, web page is uh, has not aged too well. Uh, I, I think it has has not been up updated uh, during the last 18 years. Um, also, a great help for um, dealing with the fine material is the. Archaeological Terminology Board that uh, works at the University of uh, Tartu, which can um, uh, which can give us the terminology that has been agreed upon by all the researchers. So um, some examples uh, for the inspiration. Uh, well, uh, I think educa educational applications are um, very very fun and they. Um, they work really well, and uh, especially with uh, younger children. 
So uh, there have been some developed in uh, that, uh, that university, uh, and these have been focused on uh, educating about nature. The ones on the right, you can see the upper one is about uh, it's uh, about birds in Estonia. You can uh, you can easily go bird watching uh, with this app. You can identify the birds uh, based on um, uh, their their looks, their distribution, their, their songs, and and the and another one is identifying uh, uh, tracks of different animals, and also another one that I think that is most useful is identifying mushrooms. So uh, and all of these uh, three applications have been downloaded uh, several thousand uh, times. Uh, and another kind of uh, inspiration was uh, brain training apps. If you use something like Peak or Geograph training apps, which are um, um, which may look quite uh, basic, but still uh, can be can be challenging and uh, very informative. As uh, example from National Flag Flags application, where you can uh, set flags, and uh, also. Uh, Dealing with the te teaching, uh, I find, and a lot of people um, who uh, uh, take up new languages, they, they say that the uh, um, uh, language application, language learning applications based on algorithms are more, much more effective by, uh, than doing it by just uh, the normal uh, textbooks. Um, so yeah, we are developing a website. Uh, it's uh, we uh, originally we started uh, producing an application, but uh, turned to a website uh, uh, because the developers suggested that it would be more accessible for everyone. Uh, we might, might might add an application to it later. So uh, the website will be quite quite basic actually. It's, uh, it will have a catalog with several filters you can. Um, uh, uh, and also quizzes where you can kind of like uh, take tests, prepare for exams, uh, and it also has a data <coughs> form uh, which can be used by everyone who visits the site. So um, the, the catalog is uh, yeah, the main, main uh, uh, thing we're trying to do is uh, you have the expandable on uh, all kinds of uh, archaeological finds. Uh, the main filters will be based on archaeological periods, uh, really broad periods, uh, Stone Age, Iron Age, and you can go uh, really down, down to, for example, the older uh, or younger Roman Iron Age uh, types of uh, finds, uh, regions, and uh, different materials of finds. So, uh, quizzes uh, are mostly going to be quite uh, basic and uh, short, and you can, you can and you can take them uh, several times in a, in a row and get your uh, ranking on the web website. Uh, most of them will be just text to image or image to text, as you can see, um, uh, text to image on the right uh, and image to text on the, down on the left. Uh, uh, the questions can be performed by students themselves or teachers, or teachers can combine uh, exams or tests uh, based on uh, uh, these questions or make their uh, completely new quizzes. Um, so uh, we're, uh, we are going to use this. Uh, there are, are two courses at the university at the moment that focus particularly on only the fine material. Uh, from the Iron Age and from the med medieval finds, um, uh, this application will be implemented in this course as a teaching de device and uh, as a de device to use uh, during exams. Um, uh, in Estonia, to use a metal detector, you, do, you have to have a permit, and to get the permit, you have to go to a course, and we will be. Uh, <coughs> part of this uh, course. Um, I will still talk to some of the uh, museums where they have larger archaeological 
exhibitions to use it in kind of a museum teach, uh, teaching way. Uh, and uh, I think it would be also great for metal detectorists uh, to um, identify finds on the field if they, if they uh, find something that they, um, they are kind of not sure if this is uh, if this is archaeology. They have a, a ready to go application with them to uh, um, to make make sure. So um, uh, for future plans, we're planning on uh, if we uh, get the original version working properly. Uh, we're thinking about expanding to neighboring areas of the coastal Finland, uh, maybe uh, also Russia and uh, Latvia. Um, yeah, and I'll also talk some conclusions. Uh, yeah, we're hoping to make lives of students and the first a bit easier. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, at the moment, at least, I think it's going to work. Uh, uh, yeah, one thing I want to mention is it's, it's not intended as a kind of a substitution for uh, other learning methods, but as uh, more of a supplement to it. Um, yeah, we're uh, still in quite early stages, um, and yeah, as I said, I said the, the, we're kind of behind schedule because acquiring this uh, data has become more time consuming than we expected. But uh, I think it has a lot of uh, potential to implement uh, in uh, in museums, in, cla in classrooms, and with the general public, uh, but also um, as far, uh, that uh, the metal technology the metal detecting community is also a part of it. So, thank you.